All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove a very useful identity called the pre-ratio test. And the reason it's called like that is because it will be very useful later on to show that the root test is strictly better than the ratio test. So now consider a sequence Sn with non-zero terms. Then we have the following identity. The limb-inth of the ratio part Sn plus 1 over Sn is less than or equal to the limb-inth of the root part, so of Sn to the 1 over n, which is less than or equal to the limb soup of the root part, which is less than or equal to the limb soup of the ratio part of Sn plus 1 over Sn. In other words, the root part is squeezed between the ratio part. And ironically, this will show that the root test is better than a ratio test in the following sense. So corollary, so we will prove this soon, but let me show you why this is so useful. If we know that the limit of the ratio test exists, exists and equals to L, then it follows that the limit of the root test is also equal to L. And again, I will prove this in a second, but why does that show that the root test is better than the ratio test? Well, this is saying is that if the ratio test is conclusive, so if this is bigger than 1 or less than 1, then the root test is conclusive as well. However, there might be cases where the limit of the root test exists, but where the limit of the ratio test doesn't exist. All right, and let me quickly show the corollary, then I will show uh, the actual proof. So proof of corollary. corollary, Toyota corollary, then what do we know? We know this limit exists, so in particular it's equal to the limb inf and the limb soup. So from this identity, we know the limb inf of the ratio test, which is L, it's less than or equal to the limb inf of the root test, And which is less than or equal to the limb soup of the root test. And that's less than or equal to the limb soup of the ratio test, which is also L, because we know this limit is L. But then, what do we know? The limb inf and the limb soup are squeezed between L, so in particular, the limb inf equals to the limb soup. So if on limb inf, Maybe let me write this here. So, therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn to the 1 over n equals to the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn to the 1 over n, and that's equal to L. And then by the limb soup uh, squeeze theorem, we actually get that this limit equals to L. And then we are done in this case. All right. Mm, yes. Um, okay. And now let's prove this identity. Okay. So let's prove the rest. So now proof of the identity, but look. First of all, uh, the limb inf is always less than or equal to the limb soup. So this is already proven. And the thing is, if we show this identity, then in a similar way, we can also show this identity. So in other words, let's just show the last part. Show that the limb soup of n goes to infinity of Sn and root is less than or equal to the limb soup of the ratio. Let's call this a name, so let uh, L be the
the limb sweep of the ratio part. Sn plus 1 over Sn. And what we want to show, we want to show that the limb sweep of the root part is less than or equal to L. Once we've shown that, then we're done. And the question is, so, um, not the question, but notice. First of all, if L is infinity, then we're done. Because then limb soup is always less than or equal to infinity. So if L equals infinity, we're done. So assume L is finite. Right. Now, here is the thing. The only problem is it's possible that L equals to that limb soup. Okay. So we want this is limb soup. N goes to infinity of Sn to the 1 over N. It's possible that L equals to the limit. And really what we want, it's a little bit of leeway. We want some wiggle room between L and our limb soup. So in particular, in order to get that leeway, consider the following. It is actually enough to show that the limb soup is less than or equal to L1 for every L1 bigger than L. So notice, it's enough to show that this limb soup of Sn to the 1 over n is less than or equal to L1 for each L1 uh, bigger than L. Because you see, if you show this is less than or equal to L1 for this one, and then another one and another one, eventually it converges to L, and then you actually have that this limb soup is less than or equal to L. And this is actually very similar to what you've done before. So similar to, I think, a fact that you've shown before to um, if A is less than B plus epsilon, which one less than or equal to b plus epsilon for all epsilon, then a is less than or equal to b. Same thing here. If the limb soup is less than or equal to L1 for every number bigger than L1, then that limb soup is less than or equal to L. And again, this is very important because this is what will give us our wiggle room. So now, what do we know? What is a limb soup? So let me remind you of what that is. So uh, recall. Okay, what do we know? We know that L is the limb soup of uh, n as n goes to infinity of the ratio. What is the limb soup? It's the limit, or is it, I'm sorry, it's the soup, but after a very long time. So if this is a sequence, then you just take the soup after capital N, but you just let a capital N go to infinity. So this is really the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the supremum of Sn plus one over Sn, where N is bigger than capital. And now, we know that this limb soup is less than, is equal to L. So this is equal to L, and that's less than L1. Now here's the thing. So this limit, whatever that is, it's L. And we know that L is less than L1. What does that mean? It means eventually we can assume that all the terms of the sequence are actually less than L1. Because how can it be close to L, but then suddenly bigger than L1? This wouldn't make much sense. So uh, we know that there is capital N large enough such that the supremum is less than uh, L1. The supremum of the ratio test, where 
N is bigger than capital N is less than L1. Now, what does it mean for the supremum or the maximum to be less than L1? It means that all the values of your set are less than L1. So we're telling the biggest value is less than L1, so for all the values is less than L1. So in other words, for all n bigger than capital N, what we have is that S n1 over Sn is less than L1. But in other words, we have almost like a geometric sequence going on. So Sn1 is less than L1 Sn uh, for Again, n bigger than capital N. But then the thing is, we can continue this thing here. So we know for all n bigger than capital N, we have this thing that's true, but then we also have, this is less than L1 times L1 times Sn to the uh, Sn minus 1. Because again, if S, the next term is less than L1 times the current term, it means the current term is less than L1 times the previous term, etc., etc. And that becomes L1 squared times Sn minus 1. And then the point is you can just continue like that until you reach the term capital N. So this is N minus 1, and you can do N minus 2, dot, dot. And in fact, and this is what we'll prove rigorously right now, claim it is true that Sn is less than L1 times N minus capital N times S of capital N. So in order to go to the nth term using the initial term, you get an extra factor of L1 to the N minus capital N. And that makes sense, because in every step, you get an extra factor of capital N. So if you go from the initial step to the final step, you get N minus capital N factors of L1. Okay, and the proof is it's just a very simple induction. So let's just do a two-minute induction. So what is the base case? Well, technically, you want to show this for N cap bigger than capital N. So the base case is capital N plus 1. And what you have to show is, is it true that S of capital N plus 1, well, we'll see, that is less than L1 times S of capital N. But that's true because L1, it's L1 times capital N plus 1 minus capital N times S of capital N. So in fact, the base case has been shown. So S of capital N plus 1 is L of capital N plus 1 minus capital N times S of capital N. Okay, and then let's quickly do the inductive step. So inductive step. In other words, if you know that Sn is less than L1 to the N minus capital N, S capital N, then show the following. So if you know this is true, then the inductive step is true because S of N plus 1, by assumption, is less than, capital, less than L1 times S to the N. But then by the inductive hypothesis, this is less than L1 times L1 of N minus capital N, S of capital N, which becomes L1 to the N plus 1 minus capital N, S of capital N. So in other words, you have shown the inductive step as well. So if Sn is less than this, Sn plus 1 is less than that. Good. So from now on, what you know is that Sn is less than L1 to the N minus capital N, S of capital N. And of course you can, uh, um, what do I want to say? Uh, you can just um, separate the term. So this is L1 to the N, and then L1 to the minus capital N, S of capital N. Let's call this constant. 
So this becomes constant, or even better, let's call this A. So this becomes L1 to the N over A. And remember what we want to show. We want to show that the lim soup okay, is less than uh, capital, uh, is less than L1. But now let's see what happens if we take the nth root of that. So Sn to the nth root, that is less than L1 to the n of the nth root times A of the nth root. But uh, what we have, this is L1, and then this becomes A to the 1 over n. But in particular, if you take the limb soup of this, again, which is the stuff that we want, limb soup n goes to infinity of Sn to the 1 over n, that becomes less than or equal to the limb soup as n goes to infinity of L1 a to the 1 over n. But here's the thing, so the L1 comes out, and in fact, the point is, this thing actually converges. So you'll see in a second, this actually has a limit. So the limb soup is the limit. But the thing is, a is positive, so in another video I've done, we actually know that the nth root of A converges to 1. Kind of like the nth root of 2, like square root of 2, cube root of 2, fourth root of 2, etc., etc., converges to 1. So actually this converges to 1. And then we are actually done, because what we've shown is that the limb soup, as n goes to infinity, of the nth root of Sn is less than or equal to L1. And remember, we had to show that this is less than or equal to L1 for all L1 greater or equal to L. So in fact, we're all L1 bigger than L. So in fact, we get our uh, conclusion, namely uh, the limb soup as n goes to infinity of Sn, the nth root of Sn, that is less than or equal to L, but remember L was just the limb soup of the ratio part. And therefore we're done and we can stay home happy. All right, thank you very much.